Welcome to another Safish S podcast and this time around I want to show you the Safish X on Gemini PDA. So finally it's there, you can buy it now. But perhaps maybe you wait a little bit after this review. So let's get started and take a look at the uh, brand new, no, is it brand new? Let's take a look at the brand new S, Safish S running on the Gemini PDA. The official Safish X that you can now buy for 29 euros and I think 90 cents or something like this. So roughly about 30 euros. Uh, so let's get started and take a look at the device itself. Now let's build up this tripod here and zip. Let's take a look at the device itself. As you can see here, this is the uh, device and yeah, this is the device in all its glory, as you can see here, with a headphone jack, USB type C, microphone, um, speaker, another speaker, speaker, uh, USB type C, microphone, and a button, a multifunction button that allows you to answer calls. And yeah, the device itself, as you can see here, uh, Planet Computers, Gemini by Planet Computers. And you can, of course, open up the device. I think I showed it before running with Safish S. This is now Safish X running here. And uh, let me go to settings to show you the version number. Let's go to Safish updates. As you can see here, it is, I uh, hope you can see it. It is uh, version 3.0.1.14. So this is the newest version of Safish S. Um, there are a couple of limitations, I would say, in this version. So one limitation is if you go to the uh, Yola store, you won't see any Alien Dalvik, so Android runtime support won't be available uh, for your uh, Gemini PDA. So let me go to Yola, and as you can see, the only commercially or proprietary application that you get after buying Safish X for the Gemini is the Microsoft Exchange support. So what are the benefits of buying Safish X for the Gemini? Yeah, well, you get support by Yola. So you have the option to just simply report bugs to togetheryola.com and you have the option, of course, to get support by Yola for Safish X, including also OTA updates, so OTA over the air updates, uh, basically. Um, I'm not really impressed by this version, I have to say. Uh, if it had, if it would have a beta stamp, I would say, yeah, okay. But it doesn't have a beta stamp and it's running not very good. Let's take a look at the uh, battery, for example. There's, I think, a f over 4,000 milliampere hours battery inside in here. And as you can see here, um, it's really draining fast. We are about 50 percentage here. And if you take a look at here, um, it's about 12 hours now, roughly 12 hours. And um, it's yeah down to 54%. And as you can see here, this is basically my sleep time. So I woke up at nine o'clock in the morning and then turned on the device. And as you can see at this peak, uh, where it's uh, not the peak, it's where it's basically going drastically down and then slow it down is basically where I turned on the device again to take a look at the battery consumption and surfed a little bit, browsed a little bit. So battery consumption is super, super bad on this. In comparison, my Xperia X device listening to podcasts has 74% uh, now and it was charged at the same time. So 20% more and it has, I think, only half the size of the of the battery of the Gemini PDA. Of course, granted, it's a smaller screen. Uh, let's take a look. So as you can see, <laughs> the almost the whole screen is the size of the complete um, Xperia X device. Um, still, it's too fast, especially in uh, when wireless LAN is on. If you have Wi-Fi turned off, it doesn't drain this fast. So there's an issue with Wi-Fi. So what I would say is turn Wi-Fi off. Then you will have an... 
I think almost a week of battery time. So it's definitely a Wi-Fi bug here. Not sure why. Another issue I noticed is, um, as you can see here, the uh, default applications are working fine in this landscape orientation, which is a default orientation. But there are, I think, roughly 90% of apps that I tried to start from the Yola store that do not support landscape support. So just like, for example, Hebo, it will start in uh, portrait mode. So I have to go into portrait mode to play it, which is unfortunate. And even the extra landscape mode that is sitting in the settings <laughs> will not turn around the app into landscape, which is simply make everything smaller which is also not desired i would say so this is an issue definitely and it happens with a lot of applications uh, or even sometimes applications where uh, the application starts fine and and, and uh, let's let's take a look at here the fortran client for example the application starts fine in landscape mode and if i select a board here uh, and want to download some image uh, for example, uh, now I'm in portrait mode when it comes to the file manager, the file safe dialog. So these kinds of issues are here, of course, mostly because of the uh, main application developer only developing the application for portrait. But as Silica is so powerful, I would say, if you install a force everything into landscape mode patch, almost all the applications. So let's say from those 90% 90, 90 of applications that don't run well in landscape or they don't run at all in landscape, 90% of them run very fine in landscape with the landscape force patch. So it's unfortunate that Yola did not include this uh, as an option in settings, for example, to force every application into landscape mode. Of course, it does not work with all applications, but uh, would be fine to have at least as an option for those applications that don't work just like for example this little app which is just a list of quotes and and different authors for quotes it would run very fine if you force it into landscape without any issue um, so this is really unfortunate i have to say um, there are some other issues just like for example video let's go into video i'm not sure if i don't want to hit any copyright strikes Let's try to open up the Yola video here of Yola as 3.0. You will see that this video is not running smoothly. Okay, this is a very slow video, but the animation is just, it's not the 25 or 30 frames per second that it should run. So it's slightly buggy and you see it, maybe not so much in this um, video, but you see it in other videos Fortunately, copyrighted videos, maybe where there's faster action going on, but it's running in not the full frame rate it should run. The other issue you might hear right now is the sound. It's on maximum right now and it's very tinny. And if you go down to 50%, for example, you can, it's, it's barely hear, hearable. If you go to 30% or something like this, you cannot basically you have to really be quiet to hear anything. So it might be a hardware limitation because the speakers are not that great, but this is an issue. Um, and maybe not an issue with Safe Jazz so much, but uh, the, the slow playback is an issue. And the other thing is if you play back anything here on this device, battery drainage is even uh, harder on, on, on it. Um, the next thing is graphical glitches that I uh, that also appeared sometimes. Not sure. Let, let me open up this again. As you can see, as you, have you seen it? This graphical glitch. Normally, it should be smooth, a smooth transition, a smooth animation. But sometimes you have these glitches in the graphics. As you can see, this is how it should open up, and yeah, it does not work all the time, which is also uh, a problem here and there um other issues are yeah there are some other issues just like for example if you go to settings i want to edit this ambience that i'm currently on it will just crash the ambience uh, as you can see it will just load indefinitely forever and it will eat up battery as well let me open up the crest application that shows the battery usage as you can see yola settings pre-start is eating up everything i have to kill this now otherwise I'll get a battery warning in a few seconds that my battery is running out of 
power. Uh, and then I can open up settings again, but I don't have the option to configure this ambience. Can configure other ambiences, but as soon as I add more than this ringtone configuration, uh, just like for example, adding some messages, uh, tones for messages, chats and email and so on, it will produce the same issue. So basically I don't have the option to configure my um, my ambience anymore, which is yeah sad and clearly a bug. There's some other bugs in there that scream that this is one of the worst ports considered final by Yola, one of the worst versions of Safish X basically. Even the first version of uh, Safish X running on the Xperia X did not have these issues. But this is uh, the bad sides and this is also the reason I would say, personally, I would say don't buy it right now. Wait until me and others confirm that the bugs are fixed. Because I'm not very happy with this version, I really have to say. And you pay basically 9 euros for the exchange support and then 20 euros for the support in general. It's not worth it. It's really not worth it, especially if you have the community version. There are ways to update the community version to the version 3001 and um, 301, not 0. That's double, double zero. Doesn't make any sense. Uh, so there are other ways um, to just simply use um, the Safish OS on the Gemini PDA. And you have to install patches to make stuff work like it like they should. There are issues with copy and paste, so you cannot do Control C to copy stuff. You can do Control V to insert stuff, but you have to then mark with your finger the the, the words or the the text that you want to copy. If this does not work, if you click on the browser, for example, address bar, everything is marked, and you think, yeah, it's copied. Then you go to the other application, try Control V. No, it's not copied. You have to go in there. You have to uh, mark uh, it again, and then it may be copied or not. It's just simply sad to see this released as the final state of the Gemini PDA. As a first beta release, I would say, okay, I could live with uh, with this, but um, no, not with this quality. So this is my personal opinion. Uh, there are also some good things, as you can see. Um, let me go back here and show you. Why isn't it? Oh. Uh, let me go back and show you the, uh, as you can see here, the escape key is working nice. And if I uh, turn the device off or go into lock screen, if I press this button here, the, the side button, uh, the one that that you click to answer calls, it will also turn on the uh, device, which is nice, a nice feature. But it's strange that there is no option then to configure some shortcuts. If you have this great little keyboard, you cannot control anything in here with the, with the keyboard on on the screen. It would be very nice just typing terror to to do to to have a quick start, quick starter that uh, allows me launching the terminal, for example, or something like this. And if you have stuff open, keyboard works fine. But if you want to switch to something like Alt Tab into a different application, it's not working. As you can see, it's not even registering that I'm pressing uh, Alt Tab. It's it thinks I've pressed Tab only. So I cannot switch between um, applications in here, which is also not very fine. But in general, it's. Um, Despite the glitches that you saw, sometimes it's running smoothly, which is good. Um, it has support for Bluetooth, which works fine, at least for me. The Bluetooth was working fine for playing back audio, way better than on the Xperia X, where I have glitches sometimes, especially when I get emails or some Wi-Fi progress is going on, then I have weird glitches in the Bluetooth audio. I don't have this issue uh, with uh, the Gemini PDA, so this is working fine. But uh, there are other things that are working fine uh, as well, just like, for example, um, the notification system is working well here. Uh, basically, SafeJS is working like expected mo most of the times. Um, the camera app for the front-facing camera is working fine. 
as you can see here now me recording stuff and I can go into video mode as well if I'd like to um, so this is working fine I can do as you can see it's, it's, a, it's a very bad camera but I can uh, pro do shots in here oh I think I found another bug <laughs> it was flipping around now um, so camera app is working fine the only issue is if you have I don't have an extra camera here on the back but if you have an extra camera on the back it doesn't work it is not recognized only the front camera is working at the moment which is also maybe a bummer for a few people uh, you can install applications just fine like for example Storeman I can uh, just download stuff uh, from it just like Pure Maps and so on so this is working fine you get the full safer jazz experience with all the applications and and of course if you find the applications that that work in landscape mode it's no issue if you have problems you have to uh, download a patch manager and a patch and install it which is not ideal i would say for final release but uh, overall i think it is running smoothly so it's it's uh in a beta state i would say so it's good for a beta state but not for a final uh, released uh, product i was using uh, the community version before and the community version was also working fine had some glitches here and there as well but uh, yeah basically um, this is basically a small a very very small update to the community version only which is kind of sad to see so overall I would say really take your time wait wait if you have a Gemini PDA if you have the Safish community version installed just there are means to just upgrade it to 301. Uh, just try this. Um, I would say don't buy it right now. It's not in a state where I would recommend someone else buying it, even if it's as, even if he or she is a safer shares fan and likes to try out stuff. Um, what is also really strange is that there's no demo version or trial version available, mainly because there's no Elliot Dalvik, so Android runtime support planned for it. So, yeah, in general, I, I'm I'm a bit disappointed. I have to say, I will follow it because I I bought it right now, and I hope I'm reported bugs. I will bought it, and I, I really am a customer now. I, I I hope they will fix those bug bugs in the next release or one of the coming releases. Even if it's just that I can configure my ambiences again, which is I think I consider. Hmm, um, bug that is worth fixing as it will crash or it will freeze the whole setting system and a normal user will not have the option to go into crash and that just kill the application and the other issue is of course for a daily driver uh, it's it's still not usable for for a daily driver phone for example because the battery is running out quickly and you don't you have have to turn off wi-fi every time and if you forget it then uh, yeah it will not last a day, which is very, very poor battery life, in my opinion. So this is everything I have to say. Uh, I can say to this, sadly. Uh, this was my little review of Selfish X running on the Gemini PDA. We'll keep you updated on this topic um, regarding the Gemini PDA and Selfish S and, and Selfish X updates that Yola will provide. Definitely, I would say uh, that will hopefully fix uh, most of the stuff in it. So. Um, at the moment, a poor experience. That's everything for this little uh, video. If you have some comments, if you have suggestions what to try out, I said I talked already about patches that can fix uh, the orientation issues. I have, uh, there are, I think, maybe power management uh, fixes. I read somewhere on the Xperia XA2 that I also own here, which also has power management issues that the processors are running in full power in, 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 in performance mode and if you turn them in uh, power safe mode you will gain a lot of uh, battery power I'm not sure if this is true for the Gemini PDA as well if you have some suggestions tested it out on the Gemini PDA you can all comment this uh, under this video and of course give it a like uh, subscribe and yeah have a lot of fun until the next time bye